A big welcome back to Forecast News with Millie and Ashen, where we give you the lowdown on what events and anniversaries are coming up around the world this week. Please subscribe if you're not already and let us know in the comments what you think of the events that we talk about. We've actually been away, as regular viewers may have noticed, but Ashen, at least the world is still in existence, so it's not got quite that bad, but still not great, is it? Just about, just about. <laughs> where did you go away anyway? Because I saw this in the paper, they gave me a clue. What's this about? I can't even see that. I'm Maldives down. hit by something about a ratings agency, Fitch, that have really hit the Maldives. I didn't see that, but I do, that. I do see a turkey in the corner there, which I believe might give some kind of hint as to where you went. Well, yeah, I couldn't go to the Maldives. Anyway, since you've been to the Maldives, which is forging closer links with China, already the ratings agencies are conspiring together to destroy the islands that you were on. Was it beautiful where you went? It was. Uh, climate change hasn't damaged it. You know, Maldives is the flattest, I think the flattest like country in the world. The island is is just so so incredibly flat uh, and it may not be there in a few years time unfortunately so it's good to get there while you still can and you were staying in Mali with, with the people not these luxury five star places exactly of course, of course. Um, anyway this is the week beginning the 2nd of September it is so we, we better begin it's it's a busy week now I've actually got first up for Monday 2nd of September 2024 uh, looking like a bad day for Israel's uh, Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, there's a general strike again subscribe. calling for a, calling Sorry, for a ceasefire. Subscribe. We forgot to tell people to subscribe. And it's a okay. worse day for the children of Gaza, I'll tell you. Anyway. Please subscribe. Oh. I'm sure we'll be saying that many times throughout the show, which um, really great people to hear. Uh, but yes, there's a general strike calling for a ceasefire, uh, an agreement with Hamas to release hostages. Now, many people will have woken up to the news on Monday of apparently hundreds of thousands, uh, allegedly, uh, of Israelis uh, protesting after what we heard when more hostages have been killed. Uh, this is quite... Who is, sorry, who is, I think it was the Israelis that killed the hostages, even though the mainstream media, so-called legacy media, paywall media, is saying... It was Hamas that killed these hostages. The oh, hostages well, I, I were don't, by I American don't. weapons and British weapons and European weapons, weren't they? Well, to be honest, I don't know that there's any evidence of that yet. I think Hamas has blamed Israel for not agreeing no, to this. Hamas, said, it didn't really, say. Hamas has taken these prisoners to release the 10,000 prisoners, Palestinian prisoners in Israeli detention. And that's the idea of uh, October the 7th from their strategic perspective. The idea of killing the hostages amidst of what's going on is absurd. And uh, time and time again, and we've heard this from hostages who have been released, it is the fear of the British, European Union and American weaponry that is killing these people. Well, nevertheless, however it happened, what's noteworthy is that all of these uh, people in Israel, citizens of Israel, who are now protesting out on the streets, when these are the people that Netanyahu claims he's trying to protect. So something's clearly not adding adding up now. So this is quite a significant They probably want even more it? genocide as, uh, as being debated at the International Court, don't they? That's what polls show. They think Netanyahu should be going harder, don't they? Difficult to tell the press restrictions in uh, the apartheid state of Israel. I mean, I think it, today um, it's, uh, or at least Monday, September the 2nd, yesterday was September the 1st, that mm -hmm. was the Sunday, W.H. Auden wrote his famous poem about the beginning of the Second World War. How fascinating that uh, September the 2nd, I think, is when... Uh, China entered the war, I wrote it somewhere, um, that uh, Israel, the state created out of the uh, European guilt, is still committing genocide on a daily basis. And yet so-called mainstream media is talking about demonstrations, union demonstrations in Israel, Netanyahu, peace negotiations. I, th I, I don't know about you, Millie, but on my TikTok and all these other feeds, it's just showing dead children. Yeah, it, it. I mean, there's there, there's so many facets killed, killed to it. Uh, of, of course, I won't actually mention as well what what was being banded about last week is that Lancet report, which uh, you would have seen 186,000 apparently 
uh, killed in Gaza, although they have corrected it now to say that was a speculative and illustrative yes. figure, and it was a, a guess of a projection of how many may be indirectly killed in the war. So that there's still a lot of stuff. Which is about what five million people in Britain being killed, or twenty-seven million proportionally killed in the United States by all these weapons. Yeah. But uh, but obviously the the sad fact is is it is all still ongoing uh, even even as we're back after our break we we'd hoped it would have would have been cleared up by now but there's no reporting not, but... in uh, in uh, the so called mainstream media although I did uh, uh, tragically laugh when uh, the um, propaganda network CNN was criticised by the Zionists for saying that uh, this uh, hostage uh, who uh, died died. Because they said, you should have said Hamas killed him. And so CNN is under attack for being pro-Hamas. Apparently, if you do anything, you're a Hamas. But today is Labor Day, by the way, Millie. Do you know about Labor Day? It is. In the United States, uh, specifically, Labor Day, ironically, a federal holiday, isn't it? So it's not a day of labor, but it is meant to commemorate <laughs> uh, and acknowledge the, the labor movement. Well, and the, the, day, the, the working people who have built up the United States, although I say it's a holiday, but I believe around 40% of businesses are still open on Labor Day. So a lot of the population are still going to be working. So some thanks that is for the workers that keep the United States. You know how going. it started? You know, Labor Day is not is a Tell attempt it. to destroy labor. U.S. President Grover, Grover, uh, Grover Cleveland uh, decided to make a conciliatory gesture and said, no, no, it can't be May Day, because everyone was saying it should be May Day. But because of the Chicago Haymarket Affair of 1886, May Day was unacceptable. So basically, they made Labor Day for workers to avoid uh, allowing workers to unite behind May Day and the protests of the brutality of U.S. security forces who killed so many people in Chicago uh, uh, earlier, uh, 20 years earlier. But I mean, it mainly means Amazon uh, sales, doesn't it? Other yeah. retail uh, are available. Yeah, and still- it's a recovery day for Burning Man. I don't know whether you went there in uh, Nevada over no. the weekend. No? no um, we didn't. Uh, but we've got a few other things <laughs> up on Monday. And the counterculture billionaires fly in and dance and rave to m- music and think that they're... Um, Hippies? Think they're left-wing? I don't know. Think okay. they're countercultural? When I'm a billionaire, maybe I can join them. Uh, but elsewhere on Monday, there's still a lot going on. Uh, French and Ukrainian defence ministers are meeting in Paris on Monday. Francis Sebastian Lacorne, who is hosting Rustem Umarov, uh, a day after Russia struck Ukraine's capital, the drones and missiles Sebastian are calling who? Ukrainian officials. Sebastian uh, who? Uh, Sebastian Lacorne. Lacorne? Lacorne. Uh, who is that? He's France's, he's a defence minister of France. Hmm, uh, doesn't reflect the recent legislative elections of King uh, Macron. Okay, okay. Uh, current representative uh, then. And this also comes a few days after France has urged countries not to supply Russia uh, with weapons. So this is really just a, a standard meeting, uh, isn't it? But we must mention that this week, not sure yet what day it's going to be, probably possibly not today, but... Uh, could be any day, the director of the IAEA, that's the International Atomic Energy Agency, General uh, Rafael Grossi, is meeting with the Ukrainian President Zelensky in Kiev. Uh, he's going to be also be visiting the uh, uh, Zaporozhye nuclear power plant this week. I think he's been worried about the attacks on the plant, both Ukraine and Russia, Russia. accusing each other. So the IAEA guy, who's highly yeah. compromised for his work on Syria, the organization has been seen to be a CIA cut out. He's going to the Zaporizhia nuclear plant in Russia. He is, uh, but he's he's been very much concerned of both sides. Last week, he visited the Kursk uh, nuclear power plant, um, which was shown to be have been damaged by drones, Bridget. which he saw. Uh, but he has said, Grossi said, I remain extremely concerned and reiterate my call for maximum restraint from all sides and for strict observance of the five concrete principles established for the protection of the plant. Well, so, wait, wait, why doesn't he reasons? say it was a British storm shadow missile, wasn't it? They hit the Kursk nuclear plant. Why is he not saying, calling out the British government? Well, he specifically says all sides. 
So he's vague here. So he's very much just like anyone who's going to try and attack these plants, just don't bother. Extraterrestrials. Anyone, Guatemalans, Animals. all sides. What's he talking about? It was the British weaponry that hit the. This is. Well, there, I think throughout the last couple of years, both sides have accused each other. It's not just one isolated incident. There have been many, and there are people. Do you think the war. Russians damaged their own nuclear power plant in Kursk or damaged their own nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia? Surely. Well, who knows? False, false flags, you, you know, we can't know for sure because no one's got the evidence. Uh, so we can't make these presumptions. Also on Monday, though, Vietnam National Day on Monday, which celebrates the Vietnam's uh, Declaration of Independence from France in 1944, which also uh, happened on the same day uh, the Japanese formally surrendered to the Allies to signal the official end of World War II. That is also on Monday. Uh, they were going to surrender know. anyway before Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I know uh, you say that. I mean, that's still very much con contested. Well, as I tell you what's not contested. How many the French killed in Vietnam before 1945's uh, independence from France? Of course, then the United States invaded uh, Vietnam uh, mm -hmm. afterwards. You don't want to talk about the German elections and Sarah Wagenknecht. Germany is heading for communism. Isn't it? Or socialism or something like that. Or is, it, or is it not the far right, as we've been hearing in the media? I thought, oh, so right. who just knows the truth anymore? How is you the tell far me. right? If it's fascist, it should be pro-corporations. I don't think the AFD likes private corporations, does it? I mean, it's very difficult. Thuringia and Saxony results, amazing results for these parties that... Uh, are against the NATO proxy war on Russia through Ukraine, Dif you know, differing on Gaza, uh, Germany massively uh, sending weapons to Israel for the genocide. Fascinating to watch, though. But I know you'll be looking into the Azerbaijan legislative election results. Oh, no, what, for Monday? Tell me. I think they were on Sunday. Oh, I, d I didn't know this was a... I didn't. I thought this was called forecast. News. Yeah, well, no, it's it Monday. It's Monday the second of September, and the results are in, aren't they? No, okay. I haven't actually checked the results. As okay, of what are the results? Azerbaijan supplying the energy for the genocide in uh, Israel, and uh, so it'd be very interesting to see what uh, Azerbaijan, which is playing a very tricky role at the moment. Uh, one minute it's pro-Russia. Is it pro-Russia at the moment? One minute Armenia is. <laughs> the next minute Azerbaijan is. New Azerbaijan um, party. Many opposition parties boycotted the poll, which suggests to me that Azerbaijan is going in the right direction, the same direction as uh, uh, German uh, voters who hate Schultz for what he's done to destroy uh, Western Europe's uh, economic uh, uh, economic prowess. Okay, so that's Azerbaijan. Uh, we've had 13 minutes on Monday already. Shall we move yeah, to Tuesday? Yeah, because you're not interested in the new Congress inaugurated in Mexico. Or the Hilton Hotel. People have got a massive hangover in Prague today because Ursula von der Leyen was there with Czech President Pavel, Albanian Prime Minister Eddie Rama, Finnish President Alexander Stobb, Danish Prime Minister Meti Fredriksson, Kosovo, how does Kosovo have a president? Montenegro President, Mil I've got a long list here. They were all there. Some guy from Britain and retired US General John Allen. And Mikhail Khodorkovsky, the uh, oligarch who stole all the money from Russia. They're all hanging out in Prague to talk about the next move to destroy the Russian Federation, which has been the purpose since the uh, coup in Kiev. I don't think it's going well. And also there were meetings of the recent uh, assassination attempt uh, victim, Robert Fico of Slovakia. He survived. He was meeting... Uh, uh, in uh, Slovakia with this foreign minister. Lots of um, lots of reconfigurations going on as the uh, NATO nations arguably see that things are over. And Monday, it is Monday, actually, that the Bled Strategic Forum is on. I'm sure you have that in Slovenia. Oh, well, tell us in more Slovenia. about that then. No, I think you know about it. <laughs> it's called bled because all these leaders want the children of Gaza to bleed and the people of Ukraine, the children of Ukraine to bleed. 
No, I don't know why it's called Bled. It's at Bled Festival Hall in Bled, Slovenia. And there'll be European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, Antonio Guterres, these NATO proxy puppet, uh, puppet uh, marionettes, Slovenian President Natasa Pirk Musar, uh, Alexei Navalny's <laughs> widow, Gary Kasparov. Oh, hey, hello. Foreign Minister of China, Wang Yi. What is he doing there? And is it safe for him to be there? Don't know. Okay. Well, a lot going on on Monday then. But on that note, let us move to Tuesday. We've got to get through them all. Uh, now, Tuesday is interesting. It's the final planned day of this three-day campaign we've been hearing about uh, to vaccinate children in Gaza against polio, an affliction famously held by uh, the late U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who brought the U.S. Uh, into the Second World War. Now, I think what's interesting here is so that the World Health Organization has said they're going to vaccinate 90 percent of the children in Gaza. They're Not aiming to get 140,000 children over the course Sugar of lump. Four days. Sugar lump. What? Not vac- it's not vaccinated. It's a sugar lump. Have you not had it? No, I don't think so. Am I at risk? <laughs> Clearly, the who doesn't care about the likes of me, only the, the children of Gaza. Anyway, um, we'd like to say to Google that Millie will be getting it and we're not anti-vax on this channel. Take your polio sugar lump. <laughs> um, but I, I do think, though, what, what's quite interesting here is firstly how they're managing to achieve this over half a million uh, Gazan children in three days. I think they're going to extend it by an extra day, but still a very short time. They're managing to, to sugar lump the majority of these children, but not feed them or help them to safety or ensure they have the right medical treatment for, you know, if they've got limbs blown off, which I'm sure many of them have. It, it seems to me that polio is, is perhaps one of the least of their worries, or at least on par with, with the other issues. Uh, so I don't know why they're, they're taking this polio in particular so seriously. Is it because it can spread and they're worried that it can spread to other countries and therefore affect the wider population outside of Gaza? I don't know. What do you think? I think you've pinpointed exactly uh, what's going on. I think we were all shocked when uh, these uh, CIA cut out uh, aid agencies that actually prolong suffering in the global south and have done for so many years. Why feed the children of Gaza uh, with uh, European, British and United States aid money and then pour weaponry into Israel's hands to kill uh, children that have enough calories to be able to uh, uh, survive? And of course, famously, Israel, uh, which always talks about how they left Gaza and it should be like Dubai. No, they uh, deliberately had a calorie content for the children in Gaza and the people of Gaza to keep them in that siege uh, for so many years uh, after they left in the uh, 2000s. It's a it's a terrible situation, but you wouldn't know it from watching uh, uh, Sky News, BBC, CNN, Fox News. Uh, yeah. Would you? Uh, Putin, of course, has been saying a lot about uh, Gaza, mm-hmm. while at the same time not uh, acting. Uh, same with uh, China. He's in um, Mongolia. He's in Mongolia. Now, tell me, uh, tell me, uh, just pronounce for me the Mongolian counterpart's name, Millie Pinch. I didn't even bother right. writing it yes. down because there was no chance I was going to pronounce that name. What? You pronounce it for us. Ugnagin uh, Kurulsuk. Yeah. The Mongolian oh, president. Great. Oh, great. There you go. Perfect. I think there'll be a nice <laughs> Mongolia full of minerals, full of organic food, full of, uh, um, I don't know, Mongolian friend, actually, who uh, got engaged to a German guy, and he had to show his prowess at uh, being able to kill a bear or kill some kind of animal for her parents to allow him to uh, marry into the family. Mongolia. Okay. Uh, I like that country. China's well, victory. Point, it's it's interesting, though, isn't it, as to why Putin's going here? I mean, obviously, uh, Russia and Mongolia have had strong relations for many years. It's a country that borders Russia and China, landlocked in, in between the two. Uh, he's actually been invited to attend uh, ceremonial events, I think, dedicated to the 85th anniversary of what they call the joint victory of the Soviet and Mongolian armed forces over the Japanese militarists of the uh, uh, Kalkingol River, uh, and they're going to talk about the prospects of future strengthening relationships between the two. I think they're signing a few bilateral documents. But 
I mean, Mongolia is not a hugely important country on the world stage. It's not doesn't seem strategically significant. It's got a population of what three million people, something like that. How big so is why, it? I, th- I think it's a big country, isn't it? But yeah. it's not got many people. But like, what, why? So why is Putin so interested in Mongolia and keeping up relations? Why? Why does he care? Why make an effort? Largest country. Something we don't know. Old by area. Hmm. It's not that big, unless Wikipedia has got to it. Well, this is it. So I guess I wonder why it's so perhaps important for Russia to to bother with with a country like Mongolia. What? Um, That's my question. Is that Mongolia was where Genghis Khan was from, who uh, uh, stormed across Europe uh, in the uh, as the Mongol hordes that changed the whole of uh, history. So I wouldn't uh, diminish Mongolia. Mongolia could run the world. And okay. it has, has done too. It defeated everything in its path. So we're not to undermine but, Mongolia then. Maybe yeah, good things bit, are coming uh, for them. Okay. You know, we, we to invite Mongolian viewers to uh, tell us about Mongolia and why it's uh, yeah. arguably one of the most important countries in the world. China's victory over Japan, commemoration-related observances. Of course, the Second World War was not really about Europe, so an alien from outer space uh, might say. It was really a war between China and Japan. That was the Second World War. And uh, so Armed Forces Day in the Republic of Republic of China, that must be in Taiwan, uh, but the VJ Day in the People's Republic of China. There is only one China, as Washington says. Okay. It is worth mentioning, though, as we have... There are a few kind of World War II dates this week. On Tuesday, it is 85 years to the day since Britain and France, I believe, declared war on Germany. Britain and France weren't involved in World War II, were they? Ah, they, France supported the Nazis because it was Vichy, and arguably France is supporting them today in Ukraine. Very controversial. And Britain signed a pact with Hitler under Chamberlain. Right. So how was Britain? I mean, we have said this many times and I will I will repeatedly okay. say it was Churchill eventually killed. Loads it's just of not even people. worth mentioning because it just doesn't matter. But anyway, that you is know, Volkswagen CEO Martin Wintercom trial in Germany begins. Volkswagen was Hitler's favorite car maker, seems to be doing really well, as does NATO, as does NASA, as does all these different institutions that uh, were uh, filled with former Nazis, arguably, weren't they? As does the AFD party in Germany now, apparently. So. <gasps> oh, yeah. Were they using some insignia? Yeah, the that's all 32.8% of the vote in a small state. Anyway. They deny they're Nazis, unlike the oh, Azov. Of course, they're not Nazis. Of the Azov Battalion don't deny they're Nazis, do they? Well, they do. But we won't go into that it's whole guys. debate. Uh, th- I mean, they, they've literally had a statement come out saying we are not Nazis. But we won't go in <laughs> that boring debate again. Oh, um, that boring debate. Okay. What? Tuesday until Friday. Six million were killed in the Holocaust. Thank you very much. Okay. And 30 million Russians who eventually won the war, of course. Okay. Uh, re- irrelevant to, to the point we're talking about. Anyway. Tuesday until Friday, uh, it's actually the annual Russian Eastern Economic Forum whilst Putin is uh, in Mongolia. It's held on the Rusky Island, the purpose of which is to encourage foreign investment in the far east of Russia. It's usually attended by Putin, so maybe he'll go on one of the later days, do you think? But uh, a significant economic forum, isn't it? I don't know how much um, press it's going to get this year, but... Of course, That's I mean, look out for. people, you said I went to Turkey. Turkey just applied to be in uh, BRICS this week officially. Mm. And uh, you say East, Far Eastern Russia. That's mm. so far around the world. It's kind of Western, isn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> isn't it? It's kind of near <laughs> Alaska. And Alaska's American. So actually, isn't this economic forum being held closer to the United States than Moscow is to the United States? I don't know. I don't I mean, you know, who knows? Uh, the Sydney Dialogue in Australia. I yeah, thought this that's what interest me. What is this? This tech forum, isn't it? Tech conference? What is this? Google co-founder Eric Schmidt, implicated by Julian Assange of WikiLeaks in the attempt to destroy Bernie Sanders' uh, chances at uh, 
uh, at the election in, uh, when was that, 2020? Something like that? Mm. Uh, no, before. And uh, destroyed that to allow Trump in effect. Eric Schmidt, uh, even though he's not, he's a co-founder of Google, but he's involved now with the CIA cutouts, with uh, uh, all these uh, elements that are designed to surveil us. Of course, he'd be meeting with New Zealand's Ministry of uh, Minister of Defense, Judith Collins, who's part of the Five Eyes. What is it? Point, point Pine Gap. Five mm -hmm. eyes for bugging people and for being at the forefront of the war on China. So, uh, yeah, if you're uh, going to the Sydney Dialogue on uh, what it finishes on Tuesday, September the 3rd, I don't think Julian Assange will be going there. Yeah. I know he lives in Australia now. I don't think he'll be invited, though, uh, given that uh, Eric Schmidt is there. Look him up. Eric, S-C-H-M-I-D-T. We, uh, we use his um, systems every day when we use a computer. Yeah, uh, yeah. I say if you, if you're going, let us know how you found it. Uh, but we better move to Wednesday. You don't I'm... care about the strike at Heathrow Airport, one of the busiest airports in the world in London, where uh, journalists like Richard Medhurst and uh, people are being stopped uh, for dissent. Uh, yeah, massive strike at Heathrow Airport. If anyone wants to fly into London, don't. <laughs> but we don't <laughs> care about London, do we? The UK <laughs> on on this well, show. What? Let's go to Wednesday. Subscribe. Let's go to Wednesday. September. Well, the September. Uh, now, on Wednesday until Friday, it's the the Forum of China Africa Cooperation Summit. Kind of sounds like weird English there, doesn't it? But that is the name of this summit slash forum, hosted in Beijing by Chinese President Xi Jinping. It's the fourth summit of its kind, and I think there's 53 African members of the forum attending. Uh, this is coming, though, as, as the role of the global south is becoming more influential and China is being considered part of this global south and particularly significant as there are growing tensions between China and, and the US, uh, although there has been growing criticism, actually, of what's called these Africa plus one summits or plus one Africa summits where African nations are kind of being grouped together uh, at, at the host convenience they're saying, uh, and they're calling for more. They say, who's saying? CIA cutouts like USA. They're being kicked out of the Sahel. Finally, colonialism and imperialism are finally being over. And of course, the uh, NATO press is going, oh, they're just swapping Western imperialism for Chinese imperialism. Well, that's not what the African leaders are saying, are they? Okay. It's an amazing time. Okay. I think we should move to the Sahel. Niger, Burkina Faso, all these countries, there's a revolution going on and they're going to become so successful if, if NATO backed ISIS Daesh, NATO backed Al Qaeda don't attempt to destroy those governments. Already there were killings uh, in that region, but it was good to see Nigeria, which is a NATO proxy puppet country, uh, very rich, very corrupt, uh, suddenly making deals with Niger, was it, or Burkina Faso? So all of that being thrown into the mix with China as part of this new world as Western Europe and the United States decline. Although I'm sure the U.S. will then be brought uh, into any future uh, system, albeit without the IMF and World Bank, which have impoverished Africa for decades. OK, so you're going to be looking forward to this summit then. Uh, I will add as well, the UN Secretary Antonio Guterres is going to be in China for this summit uh, as well, among other people. So we'll look out for that one. Uh, also on Wednesday, uh, the winner of the Millennium Technology Prize is going to be announced in Finland. This is awarded every two years. Uh, one of the world's largest tech prizes, the, the winner is going to be presented with an award on, I think, the 30th of October. Uh, the previous winner or incumbent winner is the computer scientist Sir Tom Berners, uh, Sir Tim, sorry, Berners-Lee, who invented the World Wide Web. Who do you think is going to win this year? After we like him, don't money. we? We do. I love do Tim Berners-Lee. In fact, we couldn't be doing this without Tim Berners-Lee. But imagine really? what his family must say. So you just gave it away for free. You had the World Wide Web and you gave it away for free and allowed everyone to be able to use it for free so that massive, and of course others might say, tech oligarchs like Google could just run roughshod over your invention and destroy everything. Because that's what's happened, isn't it? Who's going to win? Hmm. You know, it's the same day 
the Google, Wednesday, September the 4th. September the 4th is the day Larry Page and Sergey Brin, CIA cutout students at Stanford University, founded Google. Maybe they'll get it. Mm-hmm. Who's running the prize? Ah. And it's the same day the Department of Justice is uh, suing Google, the U.S. Department of Justice, over monopolizing digital advertising. This is going out on YouTube, so good luck to Google and YouTube. Uh, I'm sure you'll win against the uh, Biden Justice Department. Hooray. Uh, hooray for Google, right? Yeah. I thought that was happening later in the week, though, after on Friday, this hearing against Google. That's another one, I think. There's one on oh, September. Oh, there's more. Wow, okay. Yeah. But so it is the, the, day day Google was elected, the day Allende was elected president of Chile in 1970. What a day for uh, reminding us all the power of these CIA cutouts. The CIA obviously uh, ended up helping to kill, kill him, in a way. Oh, you know, part of your Africa summit thing... Um, Not my Africa summit, but in yeah. Beijing. That's why Cyril Ramaphosa uh, will be in China, in South Africa. People, the United States and NATO countries will be watching this very closely, won't they? But I suppose there won't be any coverage in uh, U.S. Uh, oligarch media that uh, South African president is there. Maybe. In fact, the U.S. is in South Korea. Hmm? Who is? <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole of the U.S. Who is this? Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, Cara Abercrombie, okay. will lead the U.S. delegation to Seoul to talk about war on North Korea. I suppose ahead of the November election, the Biden-Harris administration is desperate for some kind of war to paint Harris as a great wartime leader. Why now? Are they trying to trump up some kind of, uh, uh, create some kind of uh, conflict? Uh, Cho Chang Lei. Uh, National Defense Policy Leader, South Korea, uh, the Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, Kim Hong Kyung, all of them. Uh, they're in Washington, D.C., actually, not in Seoul, for these talks about how to hit North Korea. Okay. Um, I think we should get to Thursday unless you've got you anything else. You don't care about Tucker Carlson with Russell Brand? Oh, that's... Oh, yeah, he's hosting Russell Brand for some tour he's doing, Tucker Carlson, yeah. is that right? Yeah, Russell Brand who's been accused of all sorts of terrible things in British uh, media as his show became more successful. And I have to say that it's the day in 1886 that Geronimo surrendered to the Americans, and he was then, well, the great Native American Apache leader was then um, sent to fairgrounds as a sort of uh, joke character. Um uh, used in parades by Theodore Roosevelt, who you mentioned earlier, and he died in hospital, a prisoner of war. That was uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt I mentioned, actually. Oh, I thought you meant it Theodore way before. Don't mix uh, up your Roosevelt. Okay, no, no, indeed, FDR is kind of better slightly. <laughs> Subscribe anyway. Subscribe. Okay, then, let's move to Thursday. Uh, Xi Jinping... Subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, Xi Jinping is going to be making a speech at the China, my my China Africa summit uh, on Thursday. And in the US, quite a lot of court cases uh, or related court cases. The jury is going to be chosen in Hunter Biden's trial over tax offenses. That's Joe Biden's son. We've mentioned it a few times on this show. Opening statements are due to start on the 9th of September. The Ukrainian businessman. Hunter Biden. Okay, yeah. Uh, but I suppose though this trial isn't actually going to matter too much now, or it's certainly not going to be as high profile now, I would have thought now Joe Biden is confirmed to not be the next president of the United States. How did that happen, Millie? Did that happen while we were away? What? Maybe that had happened. The coup. There was no, a coup it had happened. In the United it States. Happened. <laughs> the coup. Yeah, yeah, it had happened. I think uh, Kamala... Uh, hadn't been sort of confirmed at that point, but she is now. But maybe... Kamala to you, is it? Yeah, my my buddy, my pal. Genocide Kamala. 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 Holocaust Harris, I think she's called, isn't she? <laughs> right. Uh, still likely to likely to win the president? What, what are our predictions at this stage? I think we kind of gave predictions before. What are we thinking at this point? It's quite a tough call now, isn't it? Previously, think, we were saying definitely Trump, and I think now we're both a bit unsure, if that's fair to say. Yeah, CIA, FBI, NSA, desperate to uh, destroy the Trump 
campaign, which is now involving Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr., all these uh, uh, pro-genocide in Gaza people. Um, but obviously Trump uh, still the only candidate, uh, the anti-war candidate. Difficult, diff really difficult to see how powerful they can be, given that there was an assassination attempt on Trump uh, recently. And think of how powerful the deep state were to just remove Joe Biden when he himself said, no, I want to run. He was, I think the day before Joe Biden uh, uh, resigned. Said he wasn't going <laughs> He said, absolutely, I'm up for this. Anyway, you were in the middle of your court case stuff. Donald Trump in court. Yeah, Donald, yeah, so that's that's Hunter Biden, the, the jury's being chosen on Thursday. Uh, and yeah, another hearing in Donald Trump's election case as well. I, I think this is to try and skirt around the immunity that he was given by the Supreme Court. So I think a, a new indictment has been launched. Oh, he's immune. He's, pardon? I thought he's immune, though. I think he was he was given broad immunity, wasn't he? So I think my understanding is there's been a new indictment launched to try and reword it or sort of. Skirt That's the Supreme that. Court. That's the Supreme Court that said he's immune, yeah. and then this District of Columbia Court on uh, Thursday, September the fifth. Yeah. How, how can they even do that? And, and it, the Trump people accuse that court of being a uh, basic uh, Biden Harris uh, political trial. How can they do stuff if the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, has already ruled he's immune? I think is the immunity really? ruling, as I say, was still very vague. So I think they're they're trying to work around that in some way. I'm sure they won't be successful, I imagine, in that. And then as well, we have on Thursday the court hearing uh, with former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, who's facing charges in connection with some uh, alleged attempt to affect the Arizona 2020 election by helping to arrange false claims that Trump had won in that state. He denies it, of course, and I think there are 17 other defendants, including Rudy Giuliani is one of them. So that's Your friend. There. Your friend, more like. <laughs> the mayor of New York who helped uh, that city uh, at its darkest My hour on September the 11th. That's um, true, that's true. There's um, another court hearing as well. What's the other one? Not as political as the ones you mentioned. Google challenging the Italian competition ruling. I don't know. I mean, you know, these tech companies, I, if I was Google, and I'm not pro-Google, obviously I am pro-Google because they own YouTube, the platform this is going out. If I, I would just go, you know, Italy, you know, European Union, if you don't like us, we'll just ban you from using Google. It's a bit like um, Elon Musk of Starlink uh, fame saying to the Brazilian government, we're going to just run satellites over Brazil and you can use internet freely uh, using our systems. This is the power of oligarchs and tech companies to uh, go over the heads of so-called democratic uh, regimes, uh, I would say. You know, I was more interested. I, I don't know whether you finished with your courts. Oh, yes, go on. It is the anniversary of the My Lai massacre exposed by Seymour Hirsch, our good uh, friend, when mm -hmm. uh, 109 Vietnamese civilians uh, 55 years ago were slaughtered by the United States military. It was covered up, of course. But on September the 5th, the Sofex Jordan exhibition closes up in Aqaba, Jordan. It's kind of related to the My Lai massacre anniversary of 55 years ago because it's a biennial trade fair dealing with the special forces market. You going to go, Millie? Kind of nice exhibition to go and uh, find out about what new gadgets and gizmos you can get for uh, special forces. Special forces are clearly uh, covert forces, very dangerous. What is going on in Jordan, which uh, co collaborated uh, with Israel recently and the United States and Britain in its airstrikes on Yemen, uh, obviously collaborated on the airstrikes on uh, uh, Lebanon, uh, on Iraq, on Syria. What's going on in Jordan? If anyone mm. is going to the Aqaba International Exhibition and Conference Center this what week, you know? tell us about yes. this uh, special forces market because I don't have a pass uh, to go and see it. Yeah. In fact, if any of these forums, conferences, anything we've mentioned on today's show you're going to, do let us know. We'd love, we'd love to hear how, how they go. We're never invited to them. So. No. But please subscribe. And now I know you're going to try and end on th end Thursday, but I've done so much research on something called the Mercury Prize on Thursday. 
Oh, tell us. Tell us about the Mercury Prize. The Sounds best exciting. album of the year. So I just tried to look at the, the best album of the year, uh, music industry experts, in other words, corporate executives that censor and are gatekeepers on music because young people listen to music. So you've got to be careful that musicians don't support uh, Russia in the NATO proxy war against Ukraine. They don't support Palestine. So I was looking up and uh, Barry Can't Swim. Do you like that band? You don't, Millie, you're not, you know, you, you didn't even go to Burning Man earlier in the, on the weekend. Barry Can't Swim. Is support, that the name of a band? Wow, they're really support, wacky names. Supports one of, supports the Azov Battalion, supports Zelensky, supports the proxy war against Russia. Beth Gibbons also supports them. Cat Burns, nothing. I've never seen anything. Charlie XCX. These are all the people who are up for best album of the year. Charlie XCX says she's very concerned about what's happening in Gaza. So good on her. So is CMAT. So Corinne Bailey Ray, nothing about genocide from her. English teacher, nothing. Gets supports Ukraine, the proxy war, where maybe hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians have been killed. The last dinner party is saying stuff about Gaza. Naya archives, nothing. So... I don't know. I do know that Ralph Lauren on Thursday night on September the 5th, if you're wearing Ralph Lauren, is, um, has got a secret runway show ahead of New York Fashion Week. Uh, Ralph Lauren fragrances in partnership with L'Oreal, warm friend of Israel. They, uh, they sent a letter to the Arab League saying they paid a $1.4 million fine issuing an apology. But now they put a massive investment, Ralph Lauren fragrances, into occupied Palestine. If you're wearing Ralph Lauren, make sure it's vintage. Don't buy new Ralph Lauren, <laughs> some might say. Okay. Well, that's very good. I think we do differ on this, though, Afshin. I think I don't necessarily believe musicians, actors, artists should feel pressured to. Absolutely. Keep on I wasn't politics. pressuring anyone. Okay, good. <laughs> there were great Nazi <laughs> musicians, you know, Wagner, for heaven's sake. I know you listen to Wagner okay. every. Uh, <laughs> Every night, while you dress up in clothing uh, by fashion designers supporting the uh, Ukrainian. Uh, oh, right. Boxing. I didn't know you knew what I did in my spare time. So maybe I need to turn the camera off. Right. Um, anyway, I want to move on to uh, the fact that Thursday is the UN recognized International Day of Charity on Thursday, which is nice. A day for people to recognize the role of charity in alleviating humanitarian crises and Charity. eradicating poverty. Or How well people giving poor people to make poor people feel so small. Well, I, are you saying charities are bad? Well, those that give charity, it's in their interest for the people they're giving charity to to continue to need charity so they feel better by giving the charity. So said Oscar Wilde. Look at the quote, Oscar Wilde on charity. Quite a quote, the great Irish uh, writer who was uh, so persecuted oh, by the British. So you're against humanitarian aid being delivered to children in Gaza and people in need all over the world? I didn't realise. Okay. You know, you mean I'm on the side of Israel on UNRWA? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I think every time I've gone to developing world countries before the rise of the Global South, uh, over a few drinks, the aid chiefs that uh, I would meet would all say secretly they knew that they were perpetuating the misery they were seeking to uh, reduce and and solve. Okay. But you know, I, well, go ahead, yeah. Well, as I say, so what you're saying is Charity Day is perhaps not as good as it seems. You won't be giving anything on this, this day of charity then, I assume. This is charitable, isn't it? Uh, or are you getting paid we're for We're not this, doing right? this on Charity Day, so maybe we need to give a Thursday edition. It seems to be charity, unless someone wants to sponsor <laughs> us. And I don't mind if any of you charities have tried to sponsor us, as long as you don't tell us what to say, as long as we can criticize the charities while we're being <laughs> sponsored by them. Absolutely, sponsor this channel. <laughs> You'd notice Tucker Carlson, I think, is again all week doing these tours. Every few minutes he's going, buy this coffee, buy gold, Judge Napolitano, buy... This, buy that. Why don't we ever say buy something on this uh, forecast news? Subscribe. 
Yeah, if you're watching this and you've got a company for us to promote, just tell us. We don't have morals. Afshin's lying. We'll say whatever we have to say. In fact, we saw the FT headline recently. Uh, thanks to the genocide in Gaza, the profits of uh, after 186,000, perhaps, mostly women and children have been killed. Lockheed Martin results up General Dynamics, Boeing, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman. If you want to sponsor us, as long as we can say what we want to say. I'm sure Millie will or be very not. happy. Or not. We'll say whatever you want. What? <laughs> no, that, you're trying to get a job at CNN. Really. Okay. I think let's move on to Friday. Now, Subscribe Friday, the 6th of September, 2024. 2024. Uh, now, again, Google, okay, there's a, there's a hearing on Friday in the U.S. Department of Justice against Google. Now, in August, it was ruled that Google broke antitrust laws by creating a monopoly over search engines. And this judge, Amit Mehta, is looking to consider actions or penalties against Google, which uh, shares the majority of the search engine market. Uh, and in August, Attorney General Merrick Garland said this victory against Google is an historic win for the American people. No company, no matter how large or influential, is above the law. The Justice Department will continue to vigorously enforce our antitrust laws. I mean, why this attack on Google from the United States of all countries? It's a bit confusing, isn't it? The way you said it. This? Why this attack on Google, who own YouTube? Why Google? And this is going on. Little we love Google. Oh, yeah, they're doing so many good things. I wonder whether behind the scenes, given Google uh, is a massive contractor of Merrick Garland. Uh, at the uh, Attorney General's office and the Pentagon, whether there's uh, some sort of deal underneath all this that's been done because, uh, you know, Merrick Garland clearly uh, funds Google at the Justice Department. They use Google, presumably there. Hmm. Um, maybe we need, you know who would tell us? Roger Waters, whose birthday is on 1943. He was born on the 6th of September. Um, Roger Waters, his Wikipedia page and uh, Google links are becoming quite absurd. People are accusing him of all sorts of things. But a great happy birthday from us to the former Pink Floyd, the Pink Floyd founder. And uh, I'm birthday. sure you're about to say, but uh, as the Russian Economic Forum uh, continues mm -hmm. in Rusky Island, Vladivostok, mm -hmm. regional elections in the dictatorship of Russia. There are elections nonstop in Russia. Regional elections, 13 regions in Russia start on September 6th. Yeah, that's, yeah, 13 regions, 21 direct elections, four regional governors. Though some have been po postponed, haven't they? Uh, in Kursk, for example, which Ukraine currently has control of, there's still contention over how fair and accurate Russian elections are, as is the case with every election, though, as we <laughs> seem to discover when we talk about them on this Which show. Putin isn't popular in Russia? I don't know. How would I know? <laughs> Every Shit. single survey done shows that his popularity compared to any leader in Western Europe that is sending in guns and ammunition to uh, try and kill Russians, you can't even compare it. I think even uh, the hardline NATO attempt, uh, people who want to destroy the Russian Federation and break it apart, concede that Putin is incredibly popular, which is why they say, you see, it's because the Russian people, their minds are being controlled. Um, you know, even they have to. Uh, voting ends on uh, September the 8th to that. But uh, while mm -hmm. those regional elections go on, Ukraine Ramstein Contact Group, what a Lloyd Austin, the cancer patient who went AWOL, uh, Raytheon director of the Pentagon, is it Ramstein Air Base, where 54,000 American occupying troops are there in Germany, 6,200 German workers, to meet with, um, with the Ukrainian uh, people, with the patches? That's right. And the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Charles Q. Brown. Charlie Brown. It. That's, that's right. Uh, well, this is interesting, though. I don't know if it's been officially confirmed on Friday. I think Radio Free Europe has said it would be held on Friday, but certainly on one of the days it's going to be held. But I mean, this is just standard at this point, isn't it? I think I don't... Radio Free Europe, though, because it's a CIA cutout okay. directly from USA. It is funded by the American government as a propaganda uh, station for Europe. 
All right, then. Uh, but this is pretty standard. I don't think there's been a week uh, on this show where we haven't mentioned some Ukrainian international meetings of, of this kind. So this is very uh, a usual status quo week in that sense. You skipped ahead, actually, because I was going to mention off the back of Google uh, on Friday, it's the deadline for the company Meta, the company, not, not the judge Meta, uh, to provide information to the European Commission on measures it's taken to comply with policy involving giving researchers access uh, to data uh, from Facebook and Instagram and on its plans to update election monitoring. Now, this request was made under the Digital Services Act. So kind of all this, this stuff going on with these massive tech corporations this week, Google, Facebook, Instagram, kind of a bit, a bit of a crackdown, could we say, on, on how they're handling their services, it seems to be? I mean, a totalitarian Western Europe is is obvious now to anyone around the world. Zuckerberg's letter begging to the, to Jim Jordan in Congress saying, look, the Biden-Harris administration deliberately, covertly tried to get me to censor stuff and everything is a shot across the bows, clearly, because he wants Trump to win. Is that what Zuckerberg was doing? And uh, Western Europe is just going to be blocked out uh, already. Its uh, economic decline is so bad. I mean, the... the the economies of Western Europe are in such trouble. Uh, if you just look at the percentage of global GDP uh, halved um, over the past 10 years, it's just, a, you know, Nord Stream pipeline explosion. Western Europe is finished. So I think the tech companies themselves may be thinking, you know, an exit from Western Europe in these regulatory frameworks that are designed to uh, clamp down on freedom of speech. Trump will get in, the rest of the world will start to uh, align and Try, hopefully economic growth will follow. And uh, maybe if Trump gets in, the Western European leaders anyway just bow down to their Fuhrer in Washington because they are just colonies anyway. Emmanuel Macron and Olaf Scholz uh, in Evian. Their meeting, yeah. On Friday. So I don't, yep. don't drink Evian water because Emmanuel Macron and Olaf Scholz, the two most unpopular people in Europe, King Macron, who lost heavily and has been refusing to uh, properly put a uh, prime minister reflecting the uh, values of Jean-Luc Mélenchon in, and Olaf Scholz, who uh, clearly uh, is losing badly to uh, Sarah Wagon Connect in the AFD. What are they going to be talking in Evia? Maybe they're going to poison the water and drink it. No. <laughs> I don't know what, what are they doing in Evia? I don't know, but again, one of these standard meetings that we see from week to week, aren't they? This is September the 6th, and that Ramstein Air Base, I mean, it's a target, isn't it? Russia, isn't it? Might, Russia has said it's a target. That's where yeah. all the, uh, all the uh, American troops are. Any more killing of Russian soldiers, and Ramstein Air Base is under uh, attack. G7 parliamentary speakers in Verona in Italy. Lindsay Hoyle, the British House of Commons speaker, who... Uh, Visited Israel with the Israeli ambassador Sipi Holotvi during the genocidal war on Gaza, I'm reading here. Uh, he boasted his father, Doug Hoyle, helped found Labour Friends of Israel. The Labour, uh, the, the British House of Commons speaker is uh, a great supporter of uh, what the international court uh, believe is plausible genocide. But they're all going to be there meeting Giorgio Maloney in Verona to talk about parliamentary speaking. I don't know. Okay. A lot going on then. As regards to Ramstein, I mean, I think they have meetings regularly often, don't they? Because it's the, the Ukraine defense contact group. So I, I don't think it's going to be hugely worrying or significant that they're uh, meeting. He's got cancer. Day. Isn't it difficult for Raytheon's Lloyd Austin from the Pentagon to keep flying out to Ramstein in a C-30? You know, I mean, you People know. with cancer can still do things as well you know live like normal people i'm sure if he wasn't fit to work he wouldn't be working well um, then he should have told the president when he went awol he's a military officer in fact uh, what, what do they do to deserters in the u.s army i thought they uh used to execute them uh, air quality and climate bulletin on friday september the 6th air pollution kills oh, yeah there's a report yeah. coming out on that isn't there air yeah. pollution according to who which huh, uh, I'm not sure. It was, uh, you know, it's a great institution. So seven million 
are killed every year. 4.2 million from outdoor air pollution, 3.8 million from indoor air pollution. And we're going to get the uh, World Meteorological Organization results on uh, clean air, which will show that, uh, what? So it's not very good. <laughs> I think it's going to show not very good. And the independent fact-finding mission on Sudan, 8.15 in the morning, 9.15 in the morning in Geneva, will start to insult uh, the UAE, where we're speaking to you from, uh, because there's an attack on the UAE for what uh, it's doing to help the people of Sudan, mm -hmm. arguably. Right. Yeah, that, that's over the weekend. Well, on that note, then, we should move to Saturday. You don't care about Tucker Carlson with Tulsi in uh, Colorado or Joe Biden in Michigan, desperately trying to get Muslims to vote for them or Defense Army Day in Pakistan. Well, Joe Biden's been on, on the kind of campaign trail and he's doing all sorts of... All, all yeah, but things. Michigan, which is obviously not going to vote Democrat because it's overwhelmingly Muslim, the uh, urban areas of Michigan, uh, they won't vote for genocide Joe or Holocaust Harris, so uh, lots of Michigan leaders say. And Defense Day, Army Day in Pakistan, Imran Khan, anyone heard of him who's complaining of a US coup against him? Does anyone care about Your Imran friend. Khan? No one seems to care about him. Uh, <laughs> nu they have nuclear weapons, though. Okay, Saturday, Saturday, 7th of September. Subscribe. Wonderful. Subscribe. Uh, as usual, there's going to be more protests uh, against the war in Gaza. London in particular, there's going to be protests against the war and the arming of Israel. They're going to march to the Israeli embassy in London on Saturday. Saturday has become a regular day, hasn't it? A protest day across the world against the war in Gaza. And it's... Gaza. Brazilian Independence Day on Saturday, which celebrates the Declaration of Independence from the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil, and the Al uh, Algarves in 1825. Is Brazil a country you would say is truly independent nowadays? I know you say a lot of countries aren't. Afshin, what's your analysis on Brazil? Very complicated, isn't it, in okay. Brazil? Not just because, you know, we've talked to the Lula, who was uh, overthrown by a U.S.-backed coup, and Dilma, who was overthrown uh, in a U.S.-backed coup and jailed. Uh, Brazilian leaders clearly know how powerful the United States is at subverting uh, democracy there. But, uh, I mean, who would agree with uh, Brazil's uh, censorship of Twitter and X, despite the fact Elon Musk is clearly supporting Bolsonaro and the far right in Brazil? A lot of pressure uh, on on them in, in Brazil. But, you know, it's better than it was under the Portuguese uh, reign of uh, terror in, in Portugal. The demonstrations against um, British uh, United States EU arming of uh, alleged genocide in Gaza are happening in London, but the French left under Mélenchon, mass protests across France, particularly in Paris, will be on uh, September the 7th, uh, showing how uh, how basically uh, unstable France is. And maybe France is ready for some kind of new revolution. La France Insoumise, uh, the party of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, having mass demonstrations because of Macron is refusing to submit to the democratic will of the people. That's right. Uh, and as well, Algeria on Saturday, presidential election. Uh, Algeria, which has just joined the BRICS New Development Bank in the past few hours. Uh, another election, again, that's going to be embroiled in controversy and kind of already is. Well, it? The, yeah, the, the incumbent president, uh, Abdel Majid Taboon, uh, has been there since 2019. Great I think he's. He... For Palestine and does not like Western policy on Palestine. So watch out for the propaganda against him. Okay, well, although I think he is scheduled for a re-election, but I think he was elected amid a lot of protests and boycotts, and there's there's a lot of issues there, as there seems to be. Every time we've mentioned an election on this show, it's never straightforward, is it? It's never without controversy or protests or... I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, the Atlantic Council and NATO cutouts are saying... Oh, Tebune is very controversial, organizing mass, you know, uh, clearly the CIA want to overthrow the government of Algeria. They don't want this popular leader to lead Algeria. They'll do everything to destroy uh, the incumbent president. But uh, I think uh, right now the CIA would have difficulty assassinating uh, President uh, Abdel Majid uh, Tebune because the Arab world uh, is so important in its um 
at least rhetoric in supporting the Palestinians. Algeria, the UN Security Council, every other day talking about the plight of Palestinians, trying to do as much as it could, I suppose, as it can. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, we have to wait and see whether the United States or the European... What was that? What's that? I don't know. Is that, that was, an alarm? Is that for you yeah, to wake up? Long time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so basically, we'll have to wait and see whether the CIA or MI6 or the French intelligence services, which historically has slaughtered so many hundreds of thousands of Algerians, uh, drew try and kill President Abdelmajid, uh, Abdelmajid uh, Tebuna or not, uh, because there'll be a lot of propaganda in all your newspapers saying, oh, there are massive protests against him and all the rest of it. Those protests are uh, CIA cut out demonstrations like the ones you see in uh, Hong Kong and uh, all the rest of it. Anyway, shouldn't we go to Texas? Much more fun. What's happening in Texas? You know. Quickly before we move to Sunday. What's okay, in Austin, Texas, the Texas Tribune Festival. Oh, oh yeah. Down in Texas annual festival. Uh, there'll be um, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, who supports the banning of demonstrations for Gaza, Ro Khanna, who did vote, a uh, Republican, uh, sorry, representative of the House who did vote against some bombs going to Israel. U.S. National Security Advisor, friend of ours, John Bolton, who supports the imminent, uh, immediate bombing of Iran. Uh, a voting rights activist called Stacey Abrams, these wishy-washy liberals who don't really uh, put themselves on the line uh, enough, arguably, uh, against the uh, alleged genocide. And Janet Yellen. Joe Biden's pick famously to be Treasury Secretary will be speaking at the Texas Tribune Festival. She got $7.2 million in speaking fees last time I saw it from Citibank, Goldman Sachs, Google, City, uh, National Bank, UBS, Citadel, LLC, Credit Suisse, and Salesforce. And Nancy Pelosi will be in Texas, Austin, Texas, if you want to go see. She's backed by Lockheed Martin, Google, Boeing, Honeywell, HRC, Meta, Goldman Sachs, BAE Systems. Okay, well, let us know if you're going to that and, and how it goes. We, we'd love to hear. Again, we're, we're not invited. Um, Sunday, we better quickly finish on. Greece, you don't care. Victory Day in Mozambique, obviously. Uh, commemorating and celebrating the Frelimo, signing the Lusaka Accord. Very rich country, uh, Mozambique, but uh, uh, the CIA and apartheid South Africa tried to destroy Frelimo, but it's... It's Victory Day on September the 7th uh, to commemorate that before uh, Renamo, uh, funded by the CIA, uh, tried to uh, destroy it. And um, I'm surprised you're not talking about the HRC gala dinner. You don't like them. In Washington on Saturday the 7th, uh, the annual human rights campaign dinner supporting the Biden-Harris uh, uh, Gaza genocide. It's funded by Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Pfizer, and Merck. Don't believe a thing the HRC do or tell you about uh, they call human rights committee uh, they're not they don't support human rights sorry funded by google whilst google is in like several court cases this week by Maybe the united yeah. states Maybe that makes sense for the human rights of uh, okay google boxer rebellion in uh, china anniversary i know you're dying to go to sunday Subscribe. You okay. okay. Finally, then, Sunday, 8th of September 2024. Now, I've got to mention uh, people, I'm sure, all around the world are going to be commemorating two years to the day since Queen Elizabeth II died at the age of 86 after 70 years on the throne. A woman who saw, she's a 13 US presidents, I think, met hundreds, if not thousands, of Heads of state, 500 heads of state attended her funeral alone. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Minute. Who anchored the funeral coverage of Queen Elizabeth II? That's what I keep thinking. Whenever I see Queen Elizabeth anniversary, second anniversaries, who is the presenter on the British Broadcasting Corporation who anchored the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II? There were many people anchoring. No, I know you're talking about Hugh presenter. Edwards. And yes, Hugh Edwards is a BBC a presenter. Criminal. Suspected sex criminal at the BBC, the uh, child abuse uh, broadcasting company, infamous for child abuse. He was the guy who who anchored the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II, who died on uh, two years ago on September the 8th. So if anyone wants to roll back and think of the funeral and what Queen Elizabeth II did and what she was to Britain in the national psyche in Britain, currently funding the genocide uh, in Gaza, think of suspected sex criminals of all the things
things to commemorate Queen Elizabeth II and all of the things we should can say about her. This is what your mind goes to. They should redo the funeral. So anyone who wants to mem- you know, memorialize the great Queen Elizabeth II will remember, who arguably took a lot of money off the poor, you've got to say. She was always trying to get out of tax. We know all the details of Queen Elizabeth II during austerity. There's a two-child policy in Britain. Uh, she had more than two children, didn't she? Did she have Prince Andrew? There's a two-child policy in Britain. Yeah, two-child policy in Britain. You can't have more than two children uh, in Britain uh, if you're poor. That's the policy. Right. You know about that. Although she had three. The Queen Elizabeth was allowed to have more than two children, and she had Prince Andrew. What happened to him and Jeffrey Epstein? <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, we'll move on from Queen Elizabeth II then. <laughs> <laughs> It's, no, I it's, it's Watergate. What? Well, 50 years since oh, Watergate. Uh, Gerald Ford signed the pardon of Richard Nixon on September the 8th, 50 years ago. Oh. So if you are President Biden and uh, you're worried about uh, what's going to happen uh, when all the papers are revealed, how you knew about genocide, the mass dismembering of babies' heads on an industrial scale, don't worry because you'll be pardoned by President Trump. Is that what that means? Okay. And Trump shouldn't worry. He'll be pardoned later as long as he does what the CIA tells him to. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, as well, you might like this one uh, on Sunday afternoon. International Literacy Day. I know you love books and <laughs> reading and all that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, this is a day. You don't. You don't like books. I do. I do. No, I do. Love it. I did an English literature degree. I, I love okay. books. I All don't right. have as many books as you do, though, Afshan. I know you've got got quite a lot. Um, it's a day to raise awareness of illiteracy. I think something like 700 million adults around the world are illiterate, so they can't read or write. Two thirds of them are women, as it happens still in this day and age. Uh, so this a day to, to promote literacy, which is important, isn't it, Afshin? For people to read read the news, read what's going on in the world, understand history, understand geopolitics, geography. So much about the world uh, needs to be understood through through reading. Not to name drop, but I was chatting to Dolly Parton, the great country singer, about this. My and, pal, you know, the other day. And clearly, uh, Western European countries, they need to shut down libraries, access to literacy, because if they're going to fully totalitarian, you know, it's, it's one thing to torture Julian Assange, to uh, arrest journalists at Heathrow Airport and ban Rumble in France and whatever. It's another something is going to get through. The truth is going to get through to Western European politicians about how wrong uh, this war in support of Zelensky is against Russia, how wrong they are to support apartheid Israel. And to really do it properly, the mind control thing, is to stop literacy. So we should expect uh, in the coming months, closure uh, under the guise of austerity, closure of libraries, the closure of um, all sorts of reading materials, the stopping of... uh, uh, education subsidies to schools and universities and colleges in Western Europe as the next phase in totalitarian Western Europe, so some might say. And that's what USAID tries to do, getting textbooks rewritten, history books rewritten in the global south and elsewhere, using literacy as a weapon to promote Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, BAE Systems, all the great companies that we're not asking you to invest in this is not investment advice (laughs) no it's not uh however if any of those companies want to sponsor us we'll be happy to take that i'm kidding i am joking um yeah we would be happy actually (laughs) we would be happy um i think we're gonna leave it there is there anything you really want to say (laughs) what that's what they always say buy gold (laughs) buy i don't know i have anything to have oh (laughs) Um, and here, this is a spectacle cloth. Buy this now and uh, use the code Million Afshin Forecast News. Subscribe, and we'll give you five percent off. I don't know. We've got to come up with something. I have a piece of sellotape. If you <laughs> well, that's a trademark. Sellotape. Who makes sellotape now? It's not even branded. Uh, sellotape is a brand name. We need to go into stationery. I've got a pair of scissors as well. 
British so brand, so transparent so cellulose-based pressure-sensitive tape. Who makes it? I think, you know what? I'm afraid it's made by a company called Henkel. And it's a German company, like all British companies. Yeah. And Henkel, unfortunately, is associated. It's a multi-billion dollar company. I'm afraid it's associated with some military uses. So, Millie, you've done it again. I don't care. All I'm saying is go out and buy this sellotape. It's the best thing you'll ever buy and you won't regret it. We better leave it here, though, um, on oh, that note. No. Oh, no. Hugo Henkel, he joined the Nazi party in 1933. And Henkel owned the British company sellotape now. And he was designated a national socialist model. Enter anyway, uh, New York Fashion Week. <laughs> Got to the end of this week. Don't buy uh, any fashion that uh, clearly supports Nazis. That, that's the final the final <laughs> message of uh, Shoeback. Thank you for watching. Uh, come back next week for more <laughs> sponsorship ideas. Um, anyway, no, thank you very much for watching and being patient with us as we are now back. After a few weeks off, you can watch us on YouTube, X, Spotify, Apple, uh, God knows where, all of the major uh, podcasting platforms you can watch us. Leave us a comment. Please subscribe. Let us know what you think of the stories we've discussed today. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.